We are back. Greetings from Hallandale Beach, Florida. I'm currently in transit on my way down to the Holy Bull. Uh, it's been quite the, the trip, uh, as you can tell by the, the weather we've had over the Northeast. Uh, flight, flights are canceled. Some guys are coming now. Some guys aren't. But excited for this field for the Holy Bull. Uh, we have a great field of nine entering the starting gates here. Uh, a lot of people ch- talk spin around the Todd Pletcher. Um, Todd's been infamous for doing very well in these derby prep races in Florida. So I'm interested to see how this race comes out. Um, I'll start us off by walking us through. We'll look at the number one horse, uh, the number one in this field, Galt. Um, <clears throat> Galt draws the rail. Horse is a bit of a closer, and this track has been 60% wire to wire on dirt routes. Martin Jr. have paid dividends in the past, but I think this is horse is going to be a toss here. Based on looking at last year's races, uh, you know, Gulfstream Park uh, does have turf, uh, does have dirt. Um, I know last the, there's been some talk about the synthetic tur- dirt, dirt, turf breakdown and, and the betters response. Horse Racing Nation has a great article out on that right now. So we're seeing one in, one and one sixteenth on the on the dirt here. I really think that you, you got to get off the rail um, and, and the rail is not somewhere where I'm going to be playing at all this weekend while I'm betting down here. So uh, I'm going to take a pass on this Galt horse here. But uh, Caleb, what do you think of the two? Yeah, Mo Donegal, I think, is much the horse to beat in this race. It's not the sexiest opinion. I know it's Todd Fletcher at Gulfstream, and it, it just feels like he's winning everything that's not tied down right now. But I, I think Mo Donegal really is the class of the field. I mean, he's a graded stakes winner against a lot of horses that are coming out of allowances and maiden scores. I thought his Remsen was very strong. The pace was incredibly slow that day, even by winter aqueduct standards. Uh, he was able to make a big move there and duel the entire length of the stretch against a very nice looking Chad Brown horse and Zenden. Uh, some bumping late of that race and some, uh, I'm sure everyone has opinions on what Isra isn't hurting anymore, but uh, nevertheless, he got the job done. It was a gutsy effort and I think he's a very likely winner today. So I think McDonagall's a big player. The number three Eloquist is uh, probably a horse that I can't say as much about. He looks like very much a one run closer in this field. He was also in that Remsen. He was beaten 14 lengths by the top two finishers. This really kind of feels like a very ambitious spot for this horse to take a shot. So, I mean, maybe a minor award at best, but this is not a horse I'm interested in at all. I'm going to take a look at this number four here. Uh, I'll talk about this horse a little bit later, but we're going to talk about the speed of the speed here. Uh, JJ up, uh, JJ for Santa right now at a 35% clip, the speed of the speed in the race, the bias will help. The macho man winner is going to be loose on the lead again. Um, I really, this is one of those situations where I think the horse finally found out how to win and that's to get out front and set the pace. Um, and really everybody plays to him, not allow other people to come to him. So interested to see what the tote bets it down to, but simplification out in front, going to be the speed of the speed, uh, interested how this pace dynamic sets up and if this horse can carry through. Um, Cajun Magic, the number five, three for three in the money and stakes. Uh, this Yates horse is a little bit off, too much of a layoff for me. Step up in class, long layoff. I'm probably going to talk this horse into the winner's circle now by putting all the negatives out in it. But I, can, I, I really can't see this horse being fast enough to sit that stalking strip and stalk the entire way around the track. Um, this two turns here is definitely going to be struggling with, for the horse. Uh, Cajun Magic might have an opportunity, but I really do think the horse is a toss. What do you think of the six, Caleb? Tis the bomb is the definition of a wild card in this race. I mean, all the way down to the, the Kenny Peak angle in Florida. So I don't know what to do with this horse. And I think truthfully, it's one of those horses where I, you have to let price be your determining factor. My first opinion is that this horse is a turf horse through and through. I mean, he's by hit at a bomb who won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, who's also by Warfront, an excellent turf influence. The Dan did her best running on turf as well. So, so I really do think this is a turf horse. However, he, he has handled the dirt in the past. I mean, it was a pretty weak field of washed off the turf runners at Ellis Park, but you know that he can at least handle the surface if he absolutely has to. But to me, this is sort of feels like the connections having a good horse that's probably better on the turf, but maybe catching a little bit of derby fever and trying to make him into something he's not. He's an excellent racehorse, and maybe he is just a, a dual surface threat that's this good. Uh, at five or six to one, I could maybe be interested in him, but thinking he takes money off the Breeders' Cup second place finish, I, I think the price will be shorter than I want to go for a horse that I think is on the wrong surface. 
spin wheel is a horse that is another one of these very, very uh, one run closers. I mean, this is a horse that does his best running very, very late in the stretch. Um, he did make a nice run to pretty much close from last at Churchill Downs, but he kind of got the right setup that day. The pace was on the hot side and he just mowed down the leaders to get up by a nose. Uh, I don't know that I see a very contested pace in this race. I do think uh, the four horse simplification might have things his own way a little bit. I, I just think spin is going to be left with too much to do turning for home, especially with the short stretch configuration of golf stream. So probably not for me. Taking a look at the eight here, uh, I wanted to touch quickly on the golf street bias report. You know, we're talking about 50, 60 percent pretty much wire to wire on the front end. Um, so a horse like that is definitely going to be tough to close. Uh, Another horse I'm going to take a look at here is the eighth horse, uh, White Abreu, third place finisher in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Horse was against the bias that day, big time at Churchill. It was, it was all speed coming in. Uh, horse ran a bit of a Z pattern, not a traditional, but a little bit of a Z pattern. Definitely think it's a good opportunity to watch that replay. Uh, could be in a very interesting spot here. I'm very interested to see how this race comes out. Um, this is a horse I'm definitely going to focus on if I can get eight to one or higher uh, when, when, it, when we hit the starting gates. Last horse here on the outside draw, Giants game. Uh, outside draw, BC third place finisher at the BC Juvie. Got eye to eye uh, at the top of the stretch there and sort of just flattened out. Um, and then Papa Cap came off the rail and, and it made a nice run from it. Um, horse has been working with a horse named Red, Red Knobs. Uh, it's one of Roman's better horses right now. So it's, I'm interested to see how that works. Red Knobs, I believe, is running today. So uh, I'm interested to see how that horse comes out. It'll, it'll give me a little bit a better understanding of Giants game. Horse will be short, uh, most likely too short for me, so I'm probably going to pass on it. But uh, definitely an opportunity from this outside here. Um, Caleb, when you when you have your pick here, what do you think you're going to go as your favorite? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I have nothing particularly creative in this race. I'm going to go with the chalk McDonagall here. I think he's just the class of the field. He has overcome adversity in the past. We, we know the distance should be no problem whatsoever. Uh, the one thing that may work against him a little bit is if the pace gets a little bit slow and he's too far off of it with uh, the short stretch going a mile and 16th at Gulfstream. But I, I really just think he's the best horse in this field. And you know, the way the Pletcher Barnes firing right now, I I'm not going to really overthink this one. I'm going with Modonigo as my top pick. But where'd you end up? I'm, I'm, I'm not ending up with a Todd Pletcher. That was my one goal out of this. Was the, the search did not end up with Todd Pletcher. Um, not to say I, I do think McDonald's is going to be a really good opportunity here. Um, I'm going to actually take this loose on the lead play. Uh, simplification of four fits the bias. Horses a chance to get very loose. Um, and, and as we see this GP track, that short stretch, if a horse can really get out there, they've, they've had a little bit of trouble closing in on them, um, even when the, the, the pace hasn't been too hot. Um, JJ gets clean out of the gate. I think this is one of those where he can replicate what we've seen last time. Uh, horse was ran and, and just walk him out in the front and merry around the entire way around. So my top pick is going to be the four simplification. My long shot, I'm going to go with White Abreu, um, the eight horse. I think the value play here, and I think it could get even longer. Uh, I think you're going to get a little bit of a bump in value. Got a vet scratch last month, nothing to worry about. Um, as you see, the horse cycled back into form. It's been working as a monster in the morning. Gaff, Gaff and Safi Joseph are, are dangerous together. Um, if JJ goes too quick early, I think this horse has a, time, has a chance to uh, make up some ground here and at maybe eight or ten to one. So I'm going to go for my long shot. I'm going to stick on the eight horse there. Uh, who'd you like for your long shot? Yeah, well, first thing, I mean, I, I love your long shot in here too. I, I think White Abario is an excellent play in this race, so I'm completely with you. If I'm looking a little bit deeper than him, though, for a long shot, I would maybe give a second glance to the one horse, Galt. This is probably not a horse that I think can, is a very likely win candidate necessarily, but I alluded to in another video, I mean, Bill Mott, when he takes these maiden winners and throws them in stakes races, they're typically pretty lively. I mean, the past couple of years, I mean, with three-year-old maiden winners last out going into graded stakes, he's four for 14 with a $4.75 ROI. So he's firing at almost 30% with a you know, $4 and change ROI here. This horse did make a nice move up the fence last time and one going away. So you know he likes this distance, you know he likes Gulfstream, and you know he navigates the rail. So there's a lot of things to like here. Bill Mott is having a pretty strong Gulfstream meet. This is certainly a step up in class here, but I think you'll get a big price. And this is a horse that I would definitely look at using at the very least in the bottom half of my vertical wagers. I love that. Uh, when we land on something together, hopefully good things happen. 
Uh, we have a phenomenal card here for Holy Bull Day at Gulfstream Park. 12 race card, five stakes, nine runners hit the gates for one and one sixteenth a mile in the Holy Bull. Very excited to see this. We're going to have a great day of racing Saturday afternoon between the Withers and the Holy Bull card. Uh, one more Road to the Derby race will be on Sunday out at Santa Anita, and we'll be back in a little bit to talk about that.